Hello and welcome to the episode 319 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Another failed audition, an attempt to fool a ban on mimed performances and a TV appearance are the main stories we'll focus on today. Let's start the episode with a couple of mysteries. Sunday, the 15th of November 1959, was the most likely date in which Johnny and the Moondogs, a trio featuring George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, performed at the Hippodrome Theatre in Manchester for the final round of Carol Lewis's TV star search. This was the first time the trio performed outside the Liverpool area. Whatever the correct date, one thing is certain. Victory in the round would have granted a brief spot in the local broadcast of Lewis's show on ATV, with resulting increased opportunities for gigs and working engagements. The matter was settled recording public's reaction after each performance with a claptometer, a glorified sound meter. The strongest reaction would indicate the winner. Apart from the date, a mystery shrouds what exactly happened that night, with two versions circulating. According to the first story, the most accredited, the trio gave their performance, but, due to the very late start of the affair and Lennon and McCartney being penniless, Harrison was working as an apprentice electrician at the time, they had to leave quickly before the master of ceremonies declared the winner, lest they miss the last train home. The lads simply couldn't afford to sleep anywhere in Manchester. A second story paints a slightly different picture. According to both Paul and George, John showed up without a guitar and proceeded to steal one from another act in order to perform. The swift departure of the tree, then, might be explained away with a combination of lack of money and John's thievery. One year later, in 1960, the Beatles, a quintet adding Pete Best on drums and Stu Sickly from bass to the Johnny and the Moondogs trio, performed another evening at the Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, West Germany, alternating on the stage with Rory Storm and the Hurricanes, another Liverpool band. Talking about Liverpool in 1961, the Beatles had a double feature in their second home in town, the Cavern Club. The band, now a quartet, still featuring Pete Best on drums and with Paul McCartney now taking on bass duties, had their now usual two-hour lunchtime concert and headed the bill for the evening dance event too. 1962. Time to return to London for the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, after the conclusion of their last residency in Hamburg, completed at the Star Club the night before. On the 15th of November 1963, the Beatles played the Colston Hall in Bristol as part of their autumn tour. The two houses must have felt like a routine job to the Fabs. Equally routine, but equally important for things to come, is my call to action. Visit my website at www.simonmas.com support and check out what you can do to support my efforts to produce more and better music-related contents. With this podcast coming to its natural end, I am planning on many new projects, and your help is fundamental to increase the speed with which I can work on them. Thank you! More work on Rubber Soul in 1965. Between 2.30 and 5.30 pm, Producer George Martin was with engineer Norman Smith at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road, London, to produce a mono mix of I'm Looking Through You, You Won't See Me, Girl, Wait, and Michelle, plus a stereo mix of Wait, I'm Looking Through You, You Won't See Me, Girl, and The Word. The latter mix substituted the one realized on the 11th of November. On the 15th of November 1967, there was more work on the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour film at Norman's Film Productions, and more work on Hello Goodbye in Abbey Road. 
Between 11 a.m. and 12 noon, engineer Jeff Emmerich created a new mono mix of the song, omitting any viola part. The promotional films of the songs did not feature any viola player and risked incurring the ire of the Musicians' Union if shown on TV, after the 1966 Union's ban on miming music. The remix circumvened the problem. Or did it? You'll have to check episode 225 to find that out. Let's close with a 1968 TV appearance. While in Los Angeles, California, to work on Jackie Lomax's debut LP for Apple, George Harrison took part to the Smother Brothers Comedy Hour show, broadcast on the 17th of November, between 9 and 10 pm Eastern Standard Time. The show was actually filmed today at the CBS TV studios in Hollywood, California. It was just a brief appearance, but the Beatles were the Beatles and nobody really complained for the cameo. This is it for today, join me tomorrow to learn about another early performance on the road to success and one that was filmed by three American TV stations, mostly for the chaos on the side. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.